And welcome to Southern Conference Media Day here in Asheville, North Carolina. Jim Noble alongside Wofford head coach Josh Conklin. I really should preface my remarks by saying somewhat normal football media day. How has your off season been and uh, you ready to get this thing rolling? Yeah, no, it feels good just to have some some normalcy. Um, getting ready for camp here in a couple weeks, which is good. And we had, you know, a, a normal summer and um, wasn't too long ago we were playing football. So <laughs> here we are. We're, we're excited to get going, though. All right, year four of the Coach Conklin era. Um, almost everybody on the roster are one of your guys that you, that you've recruited. So as time has evolved and you see the makeup of this roster, how excited are you to, to see these guys really come into the road this year? Yeah, it really is. I mean, you're exactly right. We've got some young guys on our roster, um, but we've got some guys that we brought in. You know, they're going into year three, year four, and it's really kind of exciting to see kind of the progress at certain position groups, whether that's the quarterback position um, or the wide receiver position, you know, some positions that maybe not had been um, as emphasized as much in the past. And we've really kind of gone through a three year vision here. And um, it's really kind of, it, it is exciting to see those guys kind of take shape. It's going to take Wofford fans a little time to get used to Wade Lang not being up on, on either in a, in a booth or a sideline for the first time in a couple of decades. But obviously, you've, you've got co offensive coordinators that are kind of split up those duties how has that evolution been it's been really good I mean obviously you're never going to replace you know Wade Lang I mean I, the, the type of career that he had and what he was able to accomplish is second to none uh, anybody in the country but uh, Dane Romero will run the day-to-day -day operations for us uh, in terms of the offense he's uh, done an incredible job so far uh, Tyler Carlton will be our quarterback coach and co-offensive coordinator those two guys have worked so far really good together um, you know, we're still going to be established on, on the line of scrimmage. We still want to run the football. Uh, they do have some new ideas and new things that they kind of want to implement, which will be exciting to see. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited where those guys can go, and they'll, they'll bring some new, fresh ideas as well. We'll recognize the names throwing the football and handing off the football, and Jimmy Wyrick and Peyton Derrick and, and some of the young guys who got a little bit of experience. We'll recognize a lot of game, names in the backfield. Youth is going to have to step up in terms of your receiving core. How mm -hmm. excited is that? Are you about that process to see some guys really take the next jump? Yeah, no, it's time for those guys to do that. And I think, you know, you look at a guy like Landon Parker's got to figure out a way to get himself um, more into the offense. And, and we got to figure out ways to get him involved in the offense as well. But um, we've got some young guys that are really talented, um, guys that I'm excited to see get the ball in their hands. And again, they're just they're they're an unknown commodity right now, a little bit. So um, those guys got to step up. We got some some young guys that are coming in this year, and we got some young guys that developed the last couple of years. Other side of the football on defense, man, you got some old men out there, which is a great thing. You've got some fifth year starters. The linebacking core comes back intact. Finally, maybe get some more depth on, on the line. Mm -hmm. So defense is your your specialty how much work has to be done to get that group where you want them to be as far as being ready to play in week one well we went through some growing pains obviously in the back end with the defensive backs we played some young guys last year which was invaluable they got invaluable experience uh, i think the one thing that we're going to have to develop quickly during the course of this fall is we've got to do a great job with our defensive line and developing those guys you know i think we played jim last year we played with three scholarship defensive line uh, for a, a huge piece of the season. We had a, a guy that played safety that was playing up there and we moved him back to the outside of the linebacker. So it was a big emphasis for us to get some transfers in there, beef that up a little bit. I, I really feel good about the guys we've got in that room, but they're going to have to progress quickly. And if, if we can get them to where we want to, I think we'll, we'll like our product. Since we're here at Southern Conference Media Day, it seems to me to be about as wide open as it's been in your stint here at Whopper. I look at four or five, maybe even six teams that could challenge for the conference championship. We also saw what VMI did in, in, in the spring season. What's your take on how the conference will shake out? Well, I think it is. I think it's, it's exactly what you're saying. I think you've got, number one, you've got a lot of good football coaches in this conference. It's really competitive week in and week out. You go back through our games from the last spring and the five games that we played, um, I think there was one game that we lost by double digits. You have to quote me on that. But um, my point is, you sit there and you go, man, it feels like you're far away, but you're not. And every week is going to be that razor thin, that razor thin's edge um, that you're going to be playing against. Um, and, and again, that go, that's a credit to the, the programs, the coaching staff, and the product that I think the Southern Conference is putting on the field. 
Final question. Uh, we were all hoping for a completely normal football season. Jury's still out on that. You guys are still going to have to kind of take care of your P's and Q's in the non-football process and see if the if the COVID protocols are still there. Um, you proved you could do it last year mm -hmm. from both a team and a school standpoint. Are you going to have to do it again, do you think? Yeah, no, I think there's going to definitely be some type of policy and protocol that we'll have to follow, uh, you know, based on vaccines or no vaccines. You know, and, and what I think I've challenged the, the football team and our staff with is, you know, whatever those policies are, um, we're going to take those on. Um, we're going to be focused on trying to win football games. I think last year sometimes we focused a little bit more on the, the virus and, and trying to get guys out there to play. Um, that's part of it. That's part of what we're going to have to go through this year and trying to really focus on, hey, let's go try to win as many games as we can and, and put the best product out there that we can. At least we are talking football. That's Coach, exactly appreciate right. Appreciate your time. The season opener at Elon, of course, it'll be here before you know it.